can see that they start recording. So I will go through the slides set now. So welcome to the virtual interim meeting for Roll. So please be aware that this meeting is aligned, aligned with the not well guidelines. We're not going to read them, but you have to be familiar. Um, so the meeting materials, uh, the ether parts, they go for the MD. Please uh, add your name if it's not there. And the slides are the interim meeting materials side of the ITF. So the agenda for today is we are going to have uh, DAO topics. So first, Hui Min Shi will present his uh, new work in the DODAC metric. And then Pascal is going to present the update in DAO projection work. And we are going to have the open floor after that. So the milestones, where well, we have uh, a key uh, recently good milestones. Um, uh, use of Ripple Info, Efficient MPDAO, turn on, they were in the RFC editor queue. Um, so like you can see, uh, so well, use of Ripple Info now as well is in the RFC editor queue. So uh, very nice that we have this work done. So now we can continue with next work. So we will have from these uh, documents, we are going to discuss about this DAO projection. And um, please, um, uh, we we got this one review from Enrollment Priority, but it will be very nice if we can get more reviews. We are uh, missing that uh, to um, progress with the document. Um, OK. So I'm um, from Capabilities once I say work in progress at MOPEX. Mm, and as well, well, ODB Ripple is uh, with the discussion with Alvaro. Mm, yeah, basically. And then, okay, uh, inactive internet draft, they are in the standby. I hope they can, they're going to be continued at some point. And they, from the related internet draft, uh, they're going to be presented today, this uh, total metric of size. And as well, while well, Pascal uh, collect all the information of the RFC 6550 piece into a document. Thank you very much, Pascal. So that's where we can continue that work. Okay, these are the open tickets from uh, GitHub uh, page. Basically, as well, well, these uh, tickets are open still. So uh, Pascal, if it's are uh, when they are closed, just uh, close them. <laughs> when they are, if the version 16. Uh, um, address them. And uh, as well, we put the open tickets from the ITF web page. So, uh, Hui Min, if you want to continue, please. About uh, your... Hi. 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 Uh, hi. This is Lee. This is Lee. And uh, I will present uh, the, the chapter for, for Hui Min. I think uh, he is getting sick. And, ah, uh, okay. OK, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Lee from Cisco. Uh, today, I will okay. introduce the draft about uh, a new the deck metric used for the deck selection. OK, next okay. page, please. As you know, ALN consists of a border router and the nodes. Uh, so there is a problem when a new node Want to join a DAG. Uh, currently, we have some object function to decide uh, which DAG to join. Uh, for example, we can use the link PTX or we can use the hop counter. But uh, we think that uh, the DAG size is an important index for node to decide uh, which DAG to join. So uh, in this draft, uh, we propose to bring the to deck size. Uh, okay, next page. Next page, please. The RFC uh, 6550 has decided deck metric container option, which can report the metrics along the to deck. Next page, please. And uh, the RFC 6551. Defined the generic format for 
deck match contender. There are some types used. Uh, for example, we use the value one for node state and the attribute, and we use the value two for node energy. I think we usually we use the value seven. It's link ETX. We use it to for for more the LN network usually. But there is no definition for the tag size. So we want to print in. Next page, please. Uh, so in this page, we propose a, a new type to carry the to deck size. As in the table, we use two bytes to indicate the to deck size. Meanwhile, we use the uh, original uh, flags defined in 6551. Uh, we use the R flag and uh, as as value one, and uh, the other P flag, C flag, O flag, and A flag as zero. Okay, uh, next page, please. As the to deck size is collected by the root, uh, we usually report. Uh, 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 I think the root can collect the uh, that size through the DAO message or other message. So the root can has a global view of the DUDAC. Uh, then we propose to disseminate the, the DAC size to nodes periodically. And uh, there are two ways to disseminate the DAC size. Uh, we can use the DIO message to uh, send the deck size to all nodes. And meanwhile, we can add the deck size uh, in the payload of DAO act message. Uh, so then we can disseminate the deck size to all nodes. And when the new nodes to want to join the, the deck stack, the deck, uh, it can has a uh, uh, selection. Uh, okay, this is all of our draft. Uh, the, do you guys have any question? Um, yes, I do have questions. So this is Dominique um, speaking as an individual. You decided to use two bytes for do that size. Does that mean you don't expect to need more than that? No do that with more than sixty five thousand nodes. Yeah, two bus can has uh sixty hundred it's so it's a, maybe it's enough. Or maybe you can consider to use uh more bytes, maybe three or four. Right, so or some variable length encoding, whatever. So maybe that's one point that needs to be discussed. Yes, in, in Ripple, we at least use a variable um, measurement for a uh, time. We we are, we provide a time unit, and then um, in the DIO, and then we we can uh, every time is expressed in that time unit. So that allows to keep a very compressed size expression of time, and still uh, express any any. Duration. I mean, if a dodag is living on a very low pace, then this uh, late this duration is very long. The unit is very long. On the other hand, if we have if we are living in a fast pace, then then that duration can be much smaller. But we avoid having to place many many bytes for for time in every packet by having the unit separate from from the count. Okay. If you look, for instance, as in the DIO in the DIO the uh, the path. Uh, the, the, the lifetime, it's expressed in that in that unit. So maybe you know it's not important if you have sixty five thousand nodes in this DODAG to know if it's to know the number of units. You, you want to know roughly the order of sixty five thousand, and so you don't really need to know the, ex the exact number of you know of nodes. So, so yes, I agree with Dominique that maybe we can look at expressing. Uh, the unit separately and globally for the geodag, depending on the kind of size we expect in this deployment. 
you can just maybe express the exponent. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the, the, the another way of saying it, right? But you could, yes, you could you could have an exponential unit as well. I, 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 so uh, the heuristic about when to send uh, the DIO if the routing table size on the route is increased. Uh, basically, I believe this new metric, this metric will be updated. Uh, but I'm just trying to wonder here whether there are other ways to handle the situation currently and how how much insufficient are they? For example, uh, whether rank is, is uh, how much of rank can help in this particular situation? Well, rank uh, gives you the depth of the node, I guess. Uh, it doesn't give you the size of the doodad. I get that. But in general, practically, yeah, how much of... Uh, yeah. It's very hard to say, Raoul, because if you have an electrical, um, if you're following an electrical line, you may do multiple hop along the same line. Um, and it's a very thin network. Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, in YSA, uh, formula to, for the nodes this, to decide uh, which pen to, uh, to join, it can see both the rank and the pen size. And, uh, uh, also have a different uh, weight. So actually, that can be yeah. That that can be the weight can be decided uh, through experiments or in the real deployment. And the other question I have is, uh, okay. please, Raoul, stay on that question, and because we are not, sure. I don't think we are done yet with your question one. So if we move to question two, I mean, right. So okay. For, for your I'll question one, okay, which was basically, can we derive this information, or is it related to another information? Uh, I recently mm -hmm. did the review of the role enrollment priority draft. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, yeah. the, the one way of deciding what the priority mm -hmm. will be, remember, just for those who did not read it recently, the enrollment priority is an information given by the root, disseminated in DIO, and that gives basically the, the floor of the priority that a node can express in a beacon. So a node mm -hmm. as a joint proxy will send beacons. In those beacons, it will say a priority. And that priority, uh, if, if, if it's a very small number, it means I really want to be a joint proxy. If it's a large number, like 200, I, well, I don't want to be a joint proxy. So if, if globally the geodag is kind of full, the root can express this floor as a high value, meaning that no node in the network can be uh, expressing a, a priority lower than this floor. So no, no, no node in the DODAG will be attractive. And, and one way of setting this priority is to take kind of, you know, the exponent, as we said, or the I order number of, uh, of DODAG size. So there is possibly a relationship between this priority and, and the DODAG size, which is kind of, how what you were asking for, if I understand well. Sorry. Now, it doesn't seem to me that uh, we must, we can hide the DODAC side within the priority because it might be that the priority is built out of other reasons. So you cannot really guess from the priority what the DODAC size is. So if you have another usage for DODAC size beyond joint priority, I would think that it's still better to provide it in full and separately from the priority. But my question is really, do, do, do we want to have a new option? I mean, to have to, to put a container on everything? Or could we, could we look at this enrollment priority draft, which just at the moment passes a single byte? And that's a, a full draft, which has to go through ISG, blah, 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 for one byte, which is this priority. Now I was saying, could we merge the document, the work that, that Lee and women are doing with uh, the, the enrollment priority work um, to make it a bit more rich or something? So that's just a suggestion. I don't know, you know what the authors think. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Uh, uh, but here my assumption is that the DUDAC size is a static value, which is disseminated by the root and all the intermediate nodes are simply passing it on uh, downstream. Which is true for the enrollment priority as well. It's just a floor. It's not, uh, 
it's it's the minimum that any node can can uh, expose. It's not what the nodes will expose. They will expose something like, is there this value or a value which is bigger than that? But the enrollment value can en enrollment priority can change on uh, route uh, going downstream. No, uh, oh, no I don't think so. Uh, it can it can reduce, right? I mean, it's it's possible that uh, a parent. Uh, I mean, it's possible that a node is disseminating uh, DIO can. So, so if root says uh, that no more nodes should be allowed, then uh, it's the same. So a, a parent, a node which is receiving a DIO can reduce it further or increase okay, it. Further. Well, actually so, uh, reduce the, 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 the need, reduce the, the attractiveness, which means putting a correct. higher number in the priority, yes. the floor that's yes. given. The higher the number, the less attractive. Less, yeah. So, 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 uh, so, yeah. But Sorry. it's still a value. The, what, what you see in the DIO, if I understand well, the draft is the floor. It's a constant. It's what the root says and it's what is being passed down. Just like the diodax size is what the root says and being passed down. Um, we, we could discuss in, in the other draft uh, if we I, want I think the, goes to modify yeah. it, but I don't think today it does it. I, I think the, the value of the diodax size is it. Not the uh, metric for the new code to uh, select which pen to join. Uh, so I think it can uh, assist or it combine the priority for the new nodes to choose a pen. Yeah. Can you can you provide an example of? We understand the concept, but uh, do you have a use case? Uh, that you would use that, and what would be the threshold? What? Yes. Uh, can you uh, could you go to the second slice? Yes. And please note that it's not just a node which was not joining and which wants to join. There's yeah, for, also the case where the... you have a node which has which in the middle of two DO DAGs, and you might want to leave the DAG on the left to reach the DAG on the right. Right. There's also the movement, the, the restructuring of DAGs. Yeah, and this new receives advertisement from uh, both DAG to DAG, and uh, it need to decide which one to join. Uh, and that's, since in the poll, all the traffic at the root, so today's uh, the root can manage a limited number of nodes. So it's better that uh, uh, the two, if there are two or multiple dodags and they can be the number of nodes can be balanced between them. Right. And, and, the I understand provide the a way for the new node to yeah. Okay. But I mean you're from Cisco, do you see a business case that needs that? Um can you yeah. can you give us a, some details? Yeah, actually we we have use case for this. I, I would just like to, you know, uh, remind one more thing here that uh, there was a proposal sometime back, which basically gave out the DUDAC size from, uh, so every parent node who is, who is disseminating the DIO will fill in its own, uh, the DUDAC rooted, rooted at its position to the downstream uh, peers. There was uh, one proposal, I, I don't remember the name, but it was from some UK university. This proposal is is having a state static value directly sent from the root to all the nodes that proposal was uh, additionally that every node will uh, disseminate the uh, the size of the doodag rooted at its own point I just wanted to you know let everyone know here right that, yeah, thank you Ron. i was going to get at that <laughs> it was the number of children Marie, which is what you say the, the size of the doodag rooted at this node and it was to to balance Mm. And and we, yes. we discussed it at length and we found that uh, as a matter of balancing, it was not necessarily a, a good information because it does not relate to the to the traffic which is going through this node. Uh, I don't think it was the size of the geodag beneath it. I think it was the number of children. And that's really what why that was a problem. It was the number of children. Uh, you, you want other to... thing... Yeah, sorry. sorry. 
well, they wanted to do load balancing based on the, the number of children. And they opposed that because I said it was too indirect compared to actually, as you would say, the, the number of the size of the sub DAG. And um, really, I what, if you want to load some... balance, you need to measure traffic, not, not number of children. Yes. I, I think that was yet another proposal, uh, Pascal, uh, and I believe that was from Georgia's, uh, if yes. I'm not wrong. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. we worked uh, on that. So maybe you have two resources here. One is the memory uh, available on your uh, border router for uh, routes, and that uh, is related to the Dodak size. And then you have the uh, capacity for forwarding traffic, and that's related to the the traffic per node per sub dodak etc so it's it's two different aspects right true okay uh, no uh, uh, so it is it is indeed two different aspects but if the use cases uh, you know uh, the, and the use cases are also different but if we are uh, you know okay anyways yeah i, I think let's keep that uh, discussion separate uh, i don't want uh, Anyway, I just wanted to let uh, you know, working group know that there were two proposals which came very near to us, but maybe the use cases are different. Anyway, my my proposal stands that we should consider not doing five RFCs with one, two bytes each. Mostly if they are highly related, like the enrollment priority and the size of the geodag, because the use case that I'm aware of for the size of the geodag is to help. Uh, what we have in this slide, which is uh, which dodag to, to join, and then in, in the life of the geodag, should I move to the next geodag because it's less loaded than the one I'm in? Well, when you say less loaded, you mean it has less nodes overall. Uh, yeah. So what you're after is the routing table size in the route. Is that the goal? In that, if for that metric, yes. Now, if so, it's if not load say, because you don't know about the traffic, right? Well, it depends. It really depends on the use case, right? If, for instance, if you have an homogeneous network of electrical meters, which is With what Polysend is building, reporting, they're, right. they're reporting the same thing. Each one, they're equal. Um, now, it could be that is, you're completely right. So it could be that I would also suggest if we did do this merge, that we also have a metric of load in terms of bandwidth at the root. Because the, usually in a network like this, most of the traffic is from or to the root. And if the network is a radio network, then the, the, const, the most constrained resource will be the radio bandwidth uh, next to the root. So if we can also have and information about that, that certainly helps deciding if you move to the pen on the left or the pen on the right. But it's, it's for the case of Wyson that on which uh, women is working, I understand that the geodax size is enough because they are all electrical meters for today. That's what they have. So short term, that's enough. Longer term, I'm with you. We also need a, a kind of a load metric. But anyway, number of children is not what you want because one children could be a father of thousands of nodes, while the other one might be a leaf. So number of children is not what you want. Anyway, size of the sub DAG would already be better. So um, we did a bunch of this stuff in six tish with enhanced beacon to determine um, the to provide the information outside of the encrypted and the Ripple ETX. Um, and my understanding is that this is a metric that would could be used to drive that in a six-tish environment, which Wysun is not. Um, so I'm wondering, does this work imply that this node is able to he hear um, DIOs from both networks? What? When you say both, uh, you mean six T show and the Y sun or? No, I mean the left dodag and the right dodag. In, yes. in six stitch, in six stitch, we have an enhanced beacon that carries this information unencrypted, so, so that you could you could you don't necessarily yeah. have to have the keys for both. But in an, I don't know how this works in this network when Y sun. 
yeah, that's the same in Wi-Sun. So in the first step, when when the new node has no information about any uh, any node tag, then uh, the the enhanced beacon, the first beacon is not uh, uh, encrypted. Okay. It's just, I guess, that we don't they don't use the sixty-ish uh, soon to be RFC document uh, right. about the unknown beacon, um, but they want something equivalent, kind of. As it goes, um, we are thinking about triple, is... which is used in common between the two. So we want to provide information for anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Wisconsin, the beacon is called the pan advertisement beacon. Yeah. Okay, so so, but is this about the the pan advertised be beacon, which I don't think it is. It's about the information that's carried down through the dodag uh, yeah. to the if, if if I you can't I can't point with my mouse, but you know. So there was there's that red arrow points to one node in the left, which is closest to, which is presumably what it's hearing, and maybe to the right. So that's not about that, but rather about how that node gets the information from the entire network about the size of the network. Right. So yeah, I, I think I think both the DIO and the, the pan advertisement are related. So first, the uh, the nodes already in the Dodag, it gets the uh, Dodag size uh, through the DIO messages, and for the new nodes, actually, it gets the uh, it receives the DIO, uh, the Dodag size from the pan advertisement message. But but uh, Michael is completely correct, right? I mean, the draft itself is just yeah. ripple. And it's just saying there is how the route will tell all the routers in the network, right? All the candidate joint proxies about the DODAC size. Okay. And so it, so yeah. I just wanted to raise the thing there. There is a document that Rule and I wrote called Role Enrollment Priority, um, which was not a metric, but is a DIO option. Um, and where the route says, essentially this a uh, similar thing but it's abstracted as a uh, a priority now if you want to put the number in there as well or create it that to me would make more sense than making it a metric container because i don't think it's something that needs to be evaluated each hop but something that the root declares michael i i love, yeah. I love you 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 were yeah, like just, exactly. just there at the beginning of the meeting right because i just said the exact same thing yes okay, Pasco sorry, I may have mentioned that yeah i may have been distracted by um a phone call sorry yeah i, I agree that it's it's a good idea to merge uh, this one with the priority but Michael, I actually said that for some people, it might be that the priority is exactly the most significant byte of those two bytes. For some environments, they can do that. Uh, but some environments will have the priority uh, more complex than just the DODAC size or independent of the DODAC size. So I just said, why don't we put both information in, in your draft, actually? And why don't you guys merge uh, the work in this draft and, and the enrollment oh, priority me. so we, we take a single document through ISG? Sounds good to me. And, and then maybe you missed or you did not miss the fact that after that with Dominic, we said, hey, there is also the, the metric of relative load at the root. Near the root, the radio is where is mostly is, is where the bottleneck is. So if we yeah, can I heard you say there, that. Yeah. Oh, so I heard that it. said and, and I and I and I thought, well, you know what, that's kind of the 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 that's kind of where it comes down to the discussion was that the root says, look, I just can't cope with any more nodes in this thing. Um, please don't nobody else join right now. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, the, 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 the priority kind of summarizes it all. So if we had only one thing, we could hide everything inside the priority. Now it might be that the, 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 the edge routers, uh, the, the joint proxies wish to have more details about what's going on to make a more intelligent, uh, well, the, the, the issue is, I think, and this was brought up by Alvero and, and I think others, um, is when we when we had talked about the six dish enhanced beacon um, was the concern was that um, unless we were detailed the algorithm and made everyone run the same algorithm, that the tuning of the parameters would not result in a deterministic result, uh, would not be deterministic. Um, and that's why I kind of prefer a single number keep the math or the formula within the network um, and and have the, the joining nodes be 
more most more dumb and not try to be uh, smart that's smart um uh, with the risk of stampeding ele elephants but um that that i think was the suggestion but i'm i don't have really the routing math clue to say but when, you, when this really expects that the root of pan one and the root of pan two have the exact same logic for giving this abstract number otherwise doesn't bring a thing well so you're saying that that calculation it needs to be within the 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 pan the lln needs to be standardized um yeah. And route one and route two may actually need to communicate uh, to to discuss their relative importance. Um, I don't disagree with that concept. Okay. So so basically, I mean, the summary of all this is we we still question whether we want the ad the additional information, but if we do, we want a single draft to carry them all, right? That's where we are. I will agree with you, Pascal, here, yes. Okay, thank you. More questions? Okay, it would be nice if this conversation go to the mailing list as well. Okay. So now Pascal, please. Okay, so uh, there is a, there's been a lot of work on this draft over the last year uh, in in several uh, periods. I, I did focus on this draft and and huh, it, well, ultimately I think it's almost as big as as Repo itself. Um, well, it's certainly big, and um, when I have to explain, uh, I remember last last interim and and after that, Michael's reaction on the mailing list. I have to reread the, the slides, etc. Tells me that uh, th there's there's too much complexity, and we need to 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 figure out what we want to keep or divide and conquer, like we did in the main repo. In the main repo, we we did uh, storing, non-storing as a way to simplify uh, the, impl the uh, implementations, which could be doing either mode, but not necessarily all. Uh, same fashion, with DAO projection, I started with something very simple, which now I call uh, the, the first profile, profile one. Um, and we'll see that uh, we go all the way to six profiles now with, with everything we've been building over the years. Um, my, my recent efforts was, uh, to simplify the explanation and provide examples and divide into profiles because that's what the mailing list has been asking me. So, so this is what I will be presenting to you today. And quote unquote, the good news for Michael or bad news or whatever is that whatever you understood at the last interim, it can kind of go away because part of the commands I had to simplify on the mailing list was to tell me, hey, it would be nice that a track, which is this projected route, a track would be very, very similar to the main DODAC. Well, almost the same thing, just it's a DODAC inside the DODAC, but that's the same operation to make things simpler. And if it has the same operation, then the encapsulation node is the root. You know, when you have a packet coming from the internet, uh, the root encapsulates to place the SRH. So the idea is, is if you are within that, that main DODAG and you want to, to, to have a track inside that main DODAG, the encapsulation node should be just like the root above. It, it, should, it should be the root of this small DODAG, which was not what I had before. What I had before was the root is the destination, not the source. It was the egress, not the ingress. The fact that it was the egress allowed to avoid a re-encapsulation because it was not really a, an insertion of a source route either. So you remember I had this game at the last interim for those who were there and, and Michael, I remember you, you had questions about that. How does this, this re-injection of routing it work without re-encapsulation? That was a complex thing. And, and it was not a, a sure win to explain that to six men. Maybe they would just reject it like they reject the insertion in general. 
this is all garb because now the track is just like the main diodag. A packet coming from outside the track gets encapsulated by the root with an SRH, just like in the main diodag. But because now the ingress is the encapsulator, is the one which has the, the, the SRH, you have to re encaps because you change the source of the packet. And, and when you change the source of the packet, that's the big reason at six man why they forced you to re encap as opposed to just insert the SRH. They say, they said, if you insert an SRH and you don't tell who you are, then if there is a problem, we can't come back to you and say you, they, you did a mistake. So six man was very clear. If you, if you add an SRH, the source of the packet must be the guy who did add the SRH. And now since the SRH is added by the ingress, which is root, and, and which becomes the source of the packet, then um, that, that comes with, well, the, the, the addition of the SRH complies to six man, but that means encapsulation. So Pascal, would it be fair to say that this change of description is now you're essentially describing, telling us how to use 6550 in a recursive fashion? Exactly. Okay. Very, very good explanation. So, so much, so, so few words to say the same thing. Yeah, but th there will be details, but you're so right. It's Dodax all the way to the bottom. Uh, actually, it can be left to right. Um, so, so if you have a leaf talking to another leaf and you build a diodag between those two, um, the ingress leaf will be just the root of that small diodag and the, the egress leaf of that diodag, the destination, uh, will decapsulate. But it, you can see it as, as Michael said, recursive. And, and all the things we have explained in use of repo info, like if the packet is coming from outside the diodag, then the root has to encapsulate, or if it's coming from an external route, you know, something coming from the outside of the diodag, but below, um, the, the six LR, which, which exposes the external route, has to, to encapsulate as well, you know, to, to, well, all this applies exactly the same now. It's just a diodag within a diodag. So let, let, I, will, I will have slides. I mean, don't try to understand everything from my words. I spent a lot of time on the slides that you, you will see now, and I, I hope that, that you'll find your answers. So first thing is I pushed 15 and 16. 15 says the root is, uh, the, the root of the diodag is, is the, the ingress, not the egress anymore. So you can have a diodag which, which, uh, which is entered on the left by a node, or the root, and now it can have multiple exits um so so it, it's like a like a tree if you like out of this route and 16 is where i cut out of the comments that i had on 15 i created all those profiles and i also placed a lot of examples like f at least four six examples uh which which are uh which you will see not really in that form but in the slide the examples I also posted on the mailing list, but I didn't get much feedback, but they still stay on. If you dig in the mailing list, you, you will find the examples. And the examples say what goes in the in the DAO, what goes in the, the main object, what goes in the target, what goes uh, in in the uh, VIO. And what, sorry. I just thought somebody was speaking. So, so I, I, just one small clue, which I wrote in this, this, this parchment on the right, is you should see the VIO as a transit information option for if you're used to non-storing mode. The transit information option is how you, the, the, you tell who your parent is. In, in non-storing mode, in the transit information option, I say the, here is the parent for the address which is in the target. So it means, if you want to reach this target, pass the packet to this parent. TIO is the parent. Well, the VIA information option is just like a multi-hop TIO. If you see it like that, it helps a lot. So you want to reach the target, and the VIO is the multi-hop sequence to reach those targets. Just like a TIO is a one-hop sequence, the VIO is a multi-hop sequence. And, and most of it stays, as you know it. Um, so another thing to simplify, I said it at last interim, the main diodag must be non-storing. And the reason why we have this must is that you want to have the topology of the main diodag 
from the non-storing mode tables. So you don't have to, to expose it with a new protocol. If you are using storing mode, then the topology of the geodag is not known by the root, and then you, 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 you would need something to tell the root about it. So we, we can build stuff just along the main geodag just because it's non-storing. And you will see that profile one and profile two are this. They are just, they don't need any tibling information. They are just building along the main geodag. Now, if you want to build transversal routes, left to right, east to west, um, then you will need the sibling information option. These are profiles three to six. Uh, so a track now is a non-storing node geodag, which works exactly like the main non-storing mode geodag. The route is a track in ingress. You you uh, you have to uh, encapsulate the packets coming from the outside, just like user free point info tells you to do. Uh, you have to place an SRH, and you, you will see that there is this case of an implicit when it's fully storing, but normally uh, for a real signal track, it's signal with non-storing PDAO, so what we call an SR VIO, basically uh, source routed VIO, that will signal a track. And what has changed this, there, there, oh, let me point it out, I must have a pointer somewhere. Oh, I, I, I cannot point, maybe I'm not a presenter. Mm -hmm. Could you make uh, me a presenter? Okay, just a minute. Okay. Um, well, yeah. any, anyway, this sentence which says there cannot be non-storing segments. I will refine what I call segments. Oops, I lost. I, I'm making you presenter. Uh, but but then I cannot I cannot uh, yeah okay you you we lost the, the you were okay. sharing your desktop or something yes I was sharing the I did not upload the slides so okay forget it stay the presenter I won't point okay sorry because the key is you can upload your slides separately and then the slides stay even if you change presenter that's how I do LQ one yeah no, but that doesn't doesn't work across platforms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, please, please send back the slides. Yes, I'm, I'm doing that. Just a bit of patience. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what I was saying is uh, we make now we make the difference between what we call a track and what we call a segment. A track is when you have to encapsulate the packet at ingress, for instance, to place an SRH, but also to place an RPI. And a, a segment is um, the, 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 the hops between two uh, lose source route hops. So one of the, the one of the key uh, messages, one of the key things for which we did this draft to start with, was that we wanted to compress the longest SRH that can happen in non-storing mode. Non-storing mode, if you have a deep geodex like 20 hops, you will have 20 entries in your source route header. So we said, hey, we can reduce that if we place a storing mode state between uh, for instance, if you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, blah to Z, uh, you could say between uh, H and M, I can have a, a storing mode. And so in, in that case, I can have a, a source route header which says uh, H and M right away and skips all the intermediate steps because there is storing mode there. So, so that's the initial case for what projection before we went into non-storing and everything. I still don't see a slide. Yes. Um I'm trying to fix that. Sorry for delay. It seems that the communication is not very good. Just one minute, please. Okay. Otherwise, I share mine. I mean, no worries. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you go back to slide? Uh, okay. I, I have to take the permissions to you first, but it seems that I got stuck. It's not responding my browser. Okay. Just make me present around yeah. I'll, I'll share. Yeah, I, I do already present them. Oh, okay. So let me share. Yeah. Okay. So so basically, what I was saying with this is that a segment is a storing mode, sequence of hops, which allows the the SRH to be loose. So so a segment is not a track because you don't need to reencapsulate. A track is really a geodag and the ingress encapsulate. 
So, so basically think of a track as a non-storing thing and think of a segment as just a sequence of hops between two loose hops in the down story. Um, what I also changed recently is how we signal the, um, the VIO. In particular, what I wanted is to avoid that an intermediate node like this ingress has to compute the compressed form of a source rot header in, with, with I2138. Um, remember I2138, the SRH is always compressed by the root. It's, it's not a very complex operation, but still it's some work. And so uh, I, I wanted to avoid, you know, the bugs and everything which may come by having a node compute a compressed rotting header. And so I said, um, and we discussed that on the mailing list, that we wanted that the VIO is expressed in the compressed form. And in particular, if it's an SR VIO, uh, it's expressed exactly as will be in the packet. Everything is designed so that what you find in the VIO, all the bytes exactly as they are, you copy them at the very beginning of the packet and that takes the packet to the egress. And that's, that's just it. Uh, you also have to signal the ingress somewhere, so you have to also have uh, IP and IP, but uh, for all the, the, the hops, you just copy verbatim the option. So there was, there was an effort there. Um, so that was one thing, but when then if you look at 8138 for the RPI, you realize that the way it compresses it was not a good fit for um, what we need here, because for this draft, we, we don't need the flags that are present in the normal RPI, which say basically the DODAC structure has changed or needs to, you need to be able to rebuild that. Um, all, all those flags go away. The only thing you really care for is the Ripple instance ID. And as it goes, if you're using non-storing mode, it's less useful. So it could be what we say elective. So basically what I did is I, I uh, added some formats to RFC 8138 for exactly the RPI optimized for what we need in this draft, which is basically make it elective or not elective. So you can, you can ignore it if you don't understand it, if you have source rot anyway. And put just the Ripple instance ID because that's the only thing we, we care for. So it's a new six layer H type seven, which would be the one we use for tracks. So, so uh, basically, that's why this draft now uh, updates or extends actually 6553 uh, and 8138 as well. Um, so, encapsulation rules have changed since last time. Now, the, the tracking rest is the root, is the source, the, the, the source of the outer header. And, and you encapsulate if you need to place either an RPI or to place an SRH, just like before. The Ripple instance ID must be the track ID. So uh, we'll see in, in uh, profile two that uh, use non-storing mode between two loose hops. So you need to re-encapsulate and then you need a track ID for it. So we have two types of VIOs. Uh, at some point they had another name, but that uh, I got people confused with that. So now both storing and non-storing, they are both called VIOs. But there was the source routing VIO and the stateful VIO. So that, that removed, that simplified the draft by removing extra names. So an SR VIO is a strict or loose sequence of nodes. And th that causes uh, a, an SRH and that requires an encapsulation. The stateful VIO is a segment, as I said earlier, it's not a track. It goes from the ingress to the ingress. If the ingress of the ingress are uh, loose hops, for instance, from the root in a, in a source route header from the root, and the RPI in the packet is already zero, and uh, the SFVIO was signaled also for for uh, Ripple instance ID zero, then everything is correct. We don't need to do any encapsulation to do anything. We just forward along the SFVIO, which allows you to to have a loose uh, rotting header in the from the root. That's basically the trick that we wanted to do initially with this draft. 
What we have not done yet is matching rules, flow information option, which I think Raoul asked at some point, which is, okay, I'm getting this packet at the tracking rest, and the tracking rest is uh, a possible way to get there. Should I put the packet on the track? Should I give it, you know, let the package follow the default route? Uh, should I just match certain flows to go on the tunnel and other flows go to the route? I mean, we have not done any discussion on that. Uh, I also changed, not match, uh, it was before actually, but I, I'm still giving them now, the, the construction of the PDAO. So that can be multiple targets, like uh, think of a PDAO as a tunnel between an ingress and an egress. At the end of this tunnel, there may be one node or there may be multiple nodes, like all the, the neighbors of the egress. So all those guys you want to reach across this tunnel, uh, basically, you place them in the target option. So, so that the one DAO can apply to multiple targets. It basically says, here is a route, here is a sequence of nodes to reach all those targets. That, that's what the DAO said. Now, to simplify, we said last time there can only be one VIO. In the case of SRVIO, at some point, we had multiple of them. But say, for some reason, you can only install two of them and not the third. Then, you know, the, the, the negotiation with the route say, I could do those two, but not that one. I mean, that was complexity. If you have a single VIO, either you can install it or you can't. So either you say yes or you say no. That's why, that's why um, basically, we said a single one. For the stateful VIO, because it has to go from the egress to the ingress, uh, hop by hop by hop, two things. One, you have to make it sequential. You can, you, it must be strict, always, because you have to, to tell to each, each node which is its parent, to which is going to give the, this packet. And the, the other thing is um, you, can have, you cannot have two of them because um, the egress passes to the previous up, which passes to the previous up, which passes to the previous up, which says ACK. Now, if you have two SFVIOs, that means that would be two ingress, and, and which one does the ACK? How does it know what happened on the other side? That means two acts now. So it, it becomes kind of complex. So we said single VIO in a DAO. So the DAO has one VIO, multiple targets, if you like, zero targets, if you like, as well. So Pascal, is, yeah? I, I think that one thing maybe to emphasize here or explain, uh, I think that in the original projected DAO that we were essentially adding um, source road headers to storing mode, right? Um, uh, the other way around. No, non we were adding storing mode. The very initial thing I wanted was adding adding storing, storing mode, mode to, to non-storing. Right. I don't know, where, uh, maybe it's not my English, but you have a non-storing main geodag and I wanted to make the SRH lose. Right. So, um, but now we have both storing mode and non-storing modes for these uh -huh. tracks. And so that's one of the questions I have is, do we need them both? Yeah, I would show example, and, and okay. then we'll discuss once all the examples are through. But I guess it's a matter of use case, and that's why I did the profiles. Some profiles would just implement one. That's, that was my answer to this, because some profiles, I don't believe we can live with just one of the two, was, but, but uh, I believe one particular use case can, thus, just like storing mode, non-storing mode, those profiles that I will present. But, but it's the beginning of this discussion. What, once you've seen the profiles, you can come back to me and say, maybe profile three, we don't want it. I don't know. Okay, but, go ahead. But I went through this effort of trying to make this dichotomy. And, and then again, think of a track as being non-storing all the time. Like the, the, the storing DIO, the storing PDAO is a segment of a larger track. It's just to shorten the SRH. Almost always. Uh, I will show you the case where I, the track is implicit, and then then again, that's exactly a case where you will tell me, well, I don't want that one. It's extra complexity. Let's drop it. I don't know. You will tell me. So, so this change is not from this time. It's it's a bit some time ago, but I just want to re remind you. Uh, a few ITFs ago, when we still still met, uh, we said we want the compressed format in the PDAO. So I did it. And the SRH header starts on, always with two bytes. So the SRH in 8138. And then you've got the V addresses. Normally, if you're lucky, you can always compress them the same. 
in which case you have a single header and then all of the address have exactly the same number of bytes. Now, there are, we have conditions where you can compress to two bytes and then at some point you need to compress to four bytes and back to two bytes or stay at four bytes, I don't know. In that case, you need to have multiple SRH, six lower H headers, and, and the addresses which are all the same size for one header. So it might be that you end up having exactly this, this exact situation, in which case all you, all you see here may repeat. It is probably rare, but it may repeat. The only case where the spec must that you, you do it to the most optimized way is uh, if the DODAG is operated with uh, 8138 on and it's non-storing mode. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, well, it's non-storing mode PDAO, so, meaning that it's, it will be inserted by the ingress. So we want the format that you see here to be exactly what the ingress will insert. We don't want the ingress to have to do the computation of the compression. We don't want the ingress to be responsible of anything. The root is responsible of everything. Not only selecting the path, but also providing the compressed form of this path. That's kind of the idea. It already does it for its own sake, so now it does it for everybody. Um, there was this discussion of how does the root node topology um, it was out of scope for a long time. Then we said, let's have non-storing mode so that at least the geodag is known. And then we said, let's have sibling information options so we can also know who's, who's left and who's right. Um, by the way, as, as written now, we have I just found that we have an acronym conflict because uh, 6550 has a solicited node information option in the disk, which has the same uh, acronym as sibling information option. So uh, we'll have to change that. And uh, any any idea is welcome. Could be neighbor information option as, as opposed to sibling, if you like. But you see, I cannot have SIO. It's already taken. Now, this, this information about the siblings or the neighbors is, is needed for um, profiles more than three. So, so that's why, for instance, if you if you just want to compress the SRH of the main DODAG, you never want to, uh, to, to do horizontal east-west route, then you just implement profile uh, one or two or both, but never, never more. But if you want to do those uh, route optimized path, then you need to do profile more than three, in which case you will need to, to tell the route about the east-west neighbors. Now, we, we provide a way to, to say uh, who is east and west, but if you have 1,000 neighbors, right now, the current draft doesn't say which ones you pick. And actually, it's a complex problem. I mean, uh, we have some thoughts. We even have IPR about doing that selection. Uh, I would be ready to share that IPR and share those ideas, but uh, I, I don't think it's the same draft. Finding out, you know, which nodes from a dominating set or something uh, could be complex and, and should be a separate discussion. So if, if the group wants, we can start a draft explaining different fashions of, of selecting out of 1,000 neighbors, two or three that will tell the route about. But, but yes, it's, it's a complex discussion. And there we go for the profiles. So now um, if you want to take some aspirin, some sugar, a break, coffee, now, now is a good time. Uh, just good news, profile zero is non-storing as you know it. So everything builds on profile zero. So we expect every node to support non-storing. We expect the main DODAC to be operating in, in non-storing mode. And so you see on the left here, it's the root of the main DODAG. And we are talking about, about a packet which goes from this root to this destination on the right, which is node F, okay? So we're taking a back packet from the root, which will encapsulate with an SRH and an RPI saying zero, or no RPI because it's a should, and sending the packet to F. Normally, the root would have to say uh, in the, uh, well, as it sends the packet, the destination should be A, and the routing header should say B, C, D, E, F, or B, C, D, E, and then E, if it's an external route, E decapsulates and, and sends the packet to F. 
So you see already in Ripple, you have the choice between passing, tunneling the packet to E or tunneling the packet to F. And those two possibilities, you will find that you always have them for profile one and two. You have the same case of you end the tunnel uh, at, at the final destination or you end the tunnel at the node just before it, which decapsulates and finds that his talk, the packet is for his neighbor. And, and in this picture, you have an example of both, actually, PDAO1 and PDAO2, uh, there are an example of this. So what we want to do in profile one is provide a storing mode stateful uh, routes in the intermediate nodes so that the SRH from the main DODAG can just say, can be shorter. Instead of saying, you know, in the compressed form, basically, it would say, a, B, C, D, E, F, normally. If it's not an external rod. If you turn all the way to F, it, it would say A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, we want to shorten it. And instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, with this, with this example, we'll just say A, C, E, F. So you see that we skip B and we skip D. And we replace that by the fact that, that there is a, a storing mode, PDAO which allows A to go to C uh, without having to, to stay B in the SRH. Is it very clear? If somebody doesn't understand what case I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, I can repeat, I want to be very clear. Cases, we, we make the multi-hop SRH smaller by removing some hops because we do a storing mode PDAO to replace that. And so in this example, I have two PDAOs. I have one which allows to go from A to C and one which goes from C to E. That's why the, the SRH says A, C, E, F. And, and as I said earlier- You could have no, had one from A to E if you wanted to. You could have a single one from A to E if you wanted to. Uh, I, I use two just to show, for one thing, it's, it's possible. <laughs> And, and, and for the other thing is, I wanted to show that just like for the main DODAG, you always can decide to end at the destination that you want to reach, or the node before the destination you want to reach, which decapsulates. And if there is no encapsulation, and forwards because it's his neighbor anyway. So in this example, for instance, for the hop for CDE, I, I send the PDAO1 to E which passes it to D, which passes it to C, which re replies to the root and say, hey, that's okay. You realize that to do the exact same thing for ABC, I could have sent PDAO2 to C, which would have passed it to B, which would pass it to A. But I didn't do that in this example. It would have worked, it would have been the exact same thing as the other one. What I did is I passed it to B only. What that means is, I don't use the DAO to tell B that uh, how to go to C, basically, because I know that C is already B's neighbor. So I know that even if I don't put B, uh, C in the DAO, B will still be able to reach C. So what I do is I stand in this example, contrary to the one on the right, PDAO1. On PDAO2, I stand a stateful uh, DAO, which says just A and B. So it means I send it to B, which follows the path all the way to A, so that's a single hop in this case. And A will answer, and A will be the ingress, quote unquote, of this segment. So- uh, Pascal, right? and so for the case for C, D, E, when the packet arrives at C, um, it has a uh, source header that says D, E on it, that gets it added by C. No, because this one is the storing mode. Storing mode. So D has to have the route to E as well. Right. That's along that exactly. Okay. What, what happens is with the way it fell right now in the document, and, and we'll see there are little things we could we decide to do, but the way it's spelled right now, when this packet reaches E, right? E says, okay, here is a, a destination E. Well, very interesting. I already know myself. But this, this creates a route towards E. I don't care for it, but that's what it does. And the route is CDE. 
okay, so as E, I will not install anything because I'm not interested in this target. And I will pass the same packet, uh, the, the packet I will pass it to, to D. So D gets the packet. What does it say? It says, oh, with this route, I can reach E and that's via E. Well, very interesting. I already added it in my neighbor table. I won't do much out of that, but I will pass it to C. C gets the packet and say, oh, to reach target E, my next hop is D. Fine, I will install a route, destination D, destination E, I'm sorry, next up D. And since I'm the first in this list, I will do the, the uh, I'm quote unquote the ingress, and I will, I will do the DAO act to the route. So the end result of all this, and, and there is oh, like multiple tables in the draft which shows all this. I spent a lot of time in the draft giving all those tables, here is the rib, here is what you do, blah, blah, blah. So I really need somebody to be courageous and go through that. But basically the end result is we have a, now a rib in C which says that to get to E, the next hop is D. Now you realize that uh, E did not do much out of that and even D did not do much out of that. This is why the more economical way of doing the same thing is to send it to do exactly what I did on the right here which is say, hey, for target B and C, I just pass the packet to B. And you realize that in that I still have, I always have the, the egress as target. It's one thing that could be implicit. At the moment, the way it's written, it's not. But we could decide that I don't have to write B as target because implicitly it's, it's, it's there. So why do I need to write it here? At the moment, for stateful VIO, I write it. It's, it's a decision we can make on the list. Uh, it could be implicit. Actually, wh when you have a long list, everything which is on your right in that list, you're in the middle somewhere, but everything which is on your right could be also placed in your rib. That will make your rib bigger. And uh, so right now the draft says, well, it's, you, you make your own decision based on the memory you have. But I think the draft should be more precise on whether as of today, we just install rods to the target or if, for instance, if I'm if there is CD, F, G, blah, and I'm D, should I install a route to F, G, H, blah via E or not? If they are in the SF VIO, I could because I know how to reach them, but it's more memory. So, so this is why today I just install routes to E. The must is to install route to E, and uh, C could install route to D to all the, the other letters if it wants to, but the, the draft doesn't say you must do it. So, so back to what we have here. So B says, okay, um, this thing is to reach uh, myself and C. First thing I must do before I accept is to check that I can reach C. Can I reach C? Yes, C my neighbor, is my neighbor. Okay, so it looks fine. I can reach both targets. I'm, I'm a valid ingress, egress, I'm sorry. I'm a valid egress for those targets, no problem. So let me pass it to A and A will see O. Oh, to reach B and C, I can use B. So B is fine, it's already my neighbor. So let me install a route to C via B. So now A has a route to C via B and C has a route to E via D. Is it clear? The end result is the same. It's, it's, it's the same on both sides. So whether you uh, the PDA one was turned to E as formatted here, or uh, B to B as formatted here, you end up with the exact same result. So now let's see let's see a packet uh, from the main geodag and what happens to this packet. So the main geodag, it knows that he has established PDAO ones and PDAO two, so he knows that he can compress uh, B and D. So he, he, when he gets a packet from the internet, he will encapsulate it. Source route, source route. I'm sorry. Track ID says zero because it's usually the main uh, geodag is always zero, but it could be anything. And then the SRH will say next up A and then, uh, so here I present it in the 8138 form, which means you put all the, the addresses. If you put it in native IPv6, it would mean the destination is A and the SRH says CEF. Okay, so this packet reaches A. A looks uh, at the packet, oh, I'm the destination, so I need to process the routing header. 
I need to make the destination C. Okay, that's done. Destination is now C. Let me look at my routing table. My routing table says C is reachable via B because of PDAO 2. C was a target, and the next stop was B, the guy after me in this list. So I'm going to pass the packet to B. So B gets a packet, and that's your question, Michael. Uh, what's the shape of the packet when, when B gets it? Uh, the packet is source uh, the root, track ID zero, destination C, because A has consumed uh, the routing header and has uh, placed the destination to C. So A gets a packet, basically root to C. C is my neighbor, let me pass him the packet. C gets the packet. So C is the next hop in the loose SRH, so it will consume that hop. And now it will place E as destination. Same thing, now he has a packet to E, it will look uh, in his rib. The rib says from this DAO here, to get to target E, my next stop after C, that's D. So my next stop is D. Let me pass the packet to D. Same thing, D has a packet to from root to E. Um, e is my neighbor, let me give him the packet. So you see that the two ways of sending the DAOs all the way to E or just to B, the node before, that gave you the exact same result. Same thing, the loose SRH that the root has done could have been ACE with the inner packet to F in which case E decapsulates the packet from the root. That's what we do for external routes. Or the root could encapsulate all the way to F, which allows to, to leave the RPI in the packet and maybe E does something when it transmits out of this RPI, like cross, I don't know. So it's useful in this case to maintain it in the packet. And then that's what the root did in this case. So we consider it's not an external route for, for, for Ripple. And so basically, um, E consumes the SRH, so all this is consumed, places destination to F, passes the packet to F, and that's how the packet gets to F. Was that, was that okay? So, so what you've seen here is, so this profile one is exactly my original intention for this draft. Being able to put one or more storing mode segments in a non-storing mode DODAG to compress the SRH, make it smaller, and get the best of both worlds, like a bit of storing and a bit of non-storing. Um, the root maintains how many PDAOs it stands so that any, any node will not have too much state beyond its memory capabilities. Remember the capability draft, which will come later and may the, help the root figure out how many routes it can install in each node. But basically the idea is uh, compared to full, non to full storing mode, we know that we'll never push too many routes in any of those nodes. So we have, we have a, it's actually an hybrid between storing and non-storing under the control of the root. Pascal, a naive question, sorry if, if it is. Huh? Uh... A naive question, sorry if it is too naive. Uh, the communication from Dodag root to any other node, is it, it's clear to me. I mean, Dodag has the view. But uh, from a P2P communication, let's say leaf node to another. Uh, that, that profile, uh, that will be the same will be profile three. That's why it's not clear to you. It's because I've not told you. Yeah, I'm profile just thinking one. about the, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to think about the, the, um, Overhead, you know, like if you are having thousand uh, nodes in one Dodak, mm -hmm. is, it wouldn't be too much for each node to, you know, like for their memories to store such, uh, such, such. That's, such that's the point. That's the point, right? Now the storing mode, you would exactly that's that's exactly the point. So, so thanks for the question. If we are doing full storing mode, we would end up in a situation where we saturate the memory of nodes near the root. Yeah. At some point. And that's why most people don't implement storing mode. Yeah. They end up with, uh, if you have a long line, many, many hops in the store in the source route. So what we say here is it's the root which decides which segments it will optimize. So it can decide to optimize only one segment in the whole network or to optimize 100 segments. So which means that we should know a priori the... The memory of the nodes. 
peer to peer yeah. communication, right? You need to know the memory of each node so you don't install too many states versus how many states they can have. But the profile one is along the main diodag, and the main diodag is non storing. So the path is known. Voila, okay. It, it's the, the, your question really comes with profile three. When we do the same thing, but from left to right, from leaf to leaf. Yeah, exactly. That's, yes. when, the, that's when we need the sibling information. And, and what I told you a bit earlier, and we can come back to that, is you may have a thousand sibling. Which of the sibling do you tell the root? And that's what I said we don't discuss in this draft. We, we provide you this sibling information option that we need to rename because of the SIO, which already exists. But they also tell you if there is more than two, three siblings, uh, if there are a thousand siblings, which one tell, do I tell the root? And Will I send a what, is, what is the And what is the method here, right? I mean, there are many questions, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's a separate draft. I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's easy to, to say how you tell the root about the sibling. It's a lot less easy to say which sibling you are going to advertise to the root. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So yes, if you want to work on it, um, uh, I have some clues. <laughs> I would love to. Okay. Okay. So that was just profile one. Guess what? We have six profiles, and that was the easy one. Okay. So <laughs> good news with profile two is the context is the same. We have the main diodag, we have the root on the left, we have the destination on the right. The only thing is we are using S store VIO instead of SF VIO, meaning we are actually uh, uh, adding a source route header to go to to do ABC now. It's no more stateful using storing mode. It's stateless using non-storing mode, meaning that this is implementing what uh, Raoul was asking me very early in this design. Raoul asked me, I think it's you, Raoul, right? You said, hey, instead of having a storing mode between CBA, why don't you don't you pass uh, a PDAO to A? And it has a source route to go to C. Well, that's profile two. Now, because, because this source route header has to be added by node A to, to go via B, A has to encapsulate. Remember my discussion, uh, now the root is the ingress. So um, I'm changing the source of the packet and inserting an SRH. What, what, uh, by the way, maybe I was not clear, but if the root is the destination, then it's all, it doesn't change in the packet. And, and remember a track ID is the root plus the ripple instance ID. So if, if you change the source, but don't change the destination, you, you stay on the same track if the track is the egress. But now that we made the track the ingress, if you change the source, you change the track. And so that that basically uh, preventing prevented the, the, the games um, the games we are doing before. So, so basically we are back into the normal mode uh, like Ripple, uh, use of Ripple says. You are inserting an SRH. You must uh, change the source, and the source is A, and uh, there will be an RPI which says, for instance, uh, 129 in the Ripple instance ID in A's namespace. So, so basically, the packet as the main diodag sends it is same as usual. The, it's inserted, uh, the SRH is inserted by the root, so the source now is a root, track ID says zero. And again, it has a loose SRH, exactly the same as before, because the root is not aware, well, it is, but it doesn't care how the loose hops are implemented, whether it's VIO, uh, SRVIO, or SFVIO. And as before, you have two ways of doing it. Either the tunnel ends at the node before the last hop, or it ends at the last hop. And then again, I've given you an example of both. So PDO1, is sent to C and it's there to do CDE to reach F. So actually, it's it's just here to reach E. Not it's not aware of F. It's, it's the inner header which will be aware of F. So what it really says is, 
um, you have this op D E and it it in this SR VIO contrary to the normal VIO to the SF VIO. What I've done is I've written that the egress is an implicit target, which means that implicitly E is, is a target. So basically what this tells D is that D E reaches E. Um, so, so what uh, what uh, C will be doing is it will install a route towards E with a source route header D E. So in the rib there is a route destination D and a source route header D E. And basically that that makes the packet go uh, source routed all the way to E, which means that E is the node which will decapsulate. Now you see that the other possibility is, like I said, to end the tunnel at the node before the destination. So going all the way to C, the node which is just before him is B. And that's what the, the, the PDAO2 does. The ingress, so the root of this track is A. Track ID is, say, 129. I just picked that number out of uh, A's namespace. And the SRVIO just says B for target C. So you realize we are signaling the exact same thing, just that B will be decapsulating and the destination is C. Whereas here, E will be decapsulating and the destination is E as well. And a big just, contrast to the other previous thing is that we don't send it to the, the, the egress, we send it only to the ingress. Right, because we install a source route header at the ingress. And the rest of the network doesn't need to know. Exactly, that's the big difference. The flow is is simpler with the source rod. That was, I guess, the motivation, if I remember the, the mails from Howell. So the motivation is the signaling is simpler because you just tell, uh, it's a question response with the root of the track. So message to the root of the track answers by the root of the track. Here, we have to do what the DAO does. The DAO is sent by the child to the parent to the parent for establishing a route the other way. So the, the DAWAC is sent by a node which is different. Yeah, that's that's a big difference. The other big difference is here you don't re-encapsulate. The packet is, is the same as was uh, written by the root. It's just that the SRH is consumed by A, C, and E, but the packet is not re-encapsulated. So what is simpler in signaling here is more complex in data plane because you have to re-encapsulate. Okay, is it is it is it okay? Question. So um, you'll see that. So you've seen that one was storing, two was non-storing. We'll keep the pace where three will be storing and five will be storing, and four will be non-storing and six will be non-storing. There is always uh, one way or the other way, one way or the other way, one way or the other way. Okay. So now starting with three, that's when we need the sibling information because now we'll be building tracks. East West. So instead of having a packet which is encapsulated by the root and that we just forward along a loose source routing, now it's going to be the ingress which will have to do this extra work of, of encapsulating the packet because the packet coming from the outside um, is not aware of the track. It's a node, it's not S sending to a node F. Uh, there can be an RPI, but it's not the right RPI. It's a packet which is, uh, you know, it could have an RPI of zero for all I, all, all I care. You know, it, it could be anything. But um, it, it, it just goes that if you want to, to forward it along a track, you need to signal a track. So three is like one, it uses stateful VIO, so it's storing mode. So if it was along the main diodag, uh, or if you know the track ID in the packet was already correct and the source was already correct, like if the source was uh, the root and the RPI was uh, the right RPI, then A would not need to re-encapsulate because it's what it's configured with. But in this case, we have an RPI which is say zero and a source which is F. But in the PDAO, I've seen that the ingress is A, it's not F. Oh, -ho. and 
I see that the track ID uh, should be 129, it's zero. Oh, so it's not my track. If I want to forward it along my track, even if the track was, um, even if it's, it's so just a segment that was signaled, remember a PDAO storing mode, it's just a segment. Yes, it's a segment, but there was there is no track. I don't see the track which will tell me how to encapsulate. So that's why I call it an implicit track. If you just signal this, Basically, you still need to encapsulate just to make A the source and follow the path ABCD, uh, which is called track ID 129. So you see where the term implicit track comes from. It comes from the fact that I've not really sent a story, a non-storing mode PDAO anywhere. There is no, it's just this storing mode PDAO. There is no non-storing mode. And we said a track is a non-storing mode PDAO. But here it's 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 not there. So it's implicitly there. It's like if I had sent this DAO and also a DAO which says uh, source route AE, which is of great interest, and track ID 129. So implicitly there is that, but it's not there. All you really have is this this segment. And the segment in this case, because the the what is signal in the DAO as the DAO DAG ID, the, the ingress. Is effectively a, and we 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 consider that there is a track. Implicitly. So what happens is uh, a gets a packet to f. He has this DAO. This DAO says for targets e and f. So in this case it's f. My next stop is b because I'm a. So a passes the packet to b. B has seen the same DAO. The DAO says for target E and F. So in this case, the destination is F. My next stop is C. So I pass the packet to C. C will do the same thing, pass the packet to E. E will pass the packet, uh, D will pass, pa sorry, C will pass to D, D will pass to E. So each one has a ribbon tree that says to go to E and F, you just go to the next letter. Once you reach E, E is the last entry. Uh, well, E is the destination, I'm sorry, in the outer header. So the outer header has a source A, destination E, on the, all the way through. So E being the destination, it will decapsulate because there is no SRH. It will just decapsulate. Oops, I moved. And now we get back the same packet uh, as before. And um, the packet is passed to a question. So, so one thing, sorry. Does scenario three use any mechanism not described already in scenario one and profile one? The difference between three and one is, uh, is that the instead of being the root, which has already placed the right RPI and everything, and is actually what was signal here. So if you if you look at the DAO in one, the, the ingress was signaled as being root and the track ID was zero. So when A got the packet, A did not need to re-encapsulate because the root was the one from the DAO and the track ID was the one from the DAO. So the packet was already on track. So is but the, the, the PDAO the P DAO mechanism, uh the packet is the, the same set up the, the signaling is the same across this yeah. thing. And the yeah. behavior I think of B, C, and D same. is the same as well. Yeah. They yeah. don't know which in, which thing there. The difference is that A needs to know that it's got to put it into this. Uh, well, you, you could if you if you do the code for three, it would work for 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 one. But if your code just for works for one, uh, maybe it's not capable of supporting more than one track. Okay, like, right. You need to have a table which says, uh, you know, I look up the ingress and the track ID and, and I find my next stop based on that. Like the, the, the C could get a packet for uh, ingress uh, Y, track ID 130. And so depending if the packet is coming from Y or coming from A, uh, the next stop will not be the same thing. So, so you, you can see a DAO as a VRF or as a tunnel or whatever you like. But uh, you need to identify on which tunnel you are, even if it's uh, stateful. So because your next stop is is in, in that table. 
So basically, it's as many ribs, if you like, as you have uh, tracks. But for somebody who supports three, the rib zero in root is just one of them. So. The four in mostly is the same once you found the right table. And for now, for profile three, I suggest it's just strict. Like you go all the way from ingress to egress. Like you don't play games. Hey, Pascal, no? the implicit track will be the serial track that you mentioned in the document? Yeah, it's a serial track. Yes, and the, well, how do you will define a complex track? Like it's not serial. Uh, a complex track is when you make you make uh, it comes later uh, when you make multiple segments. So this is a complex track. Uh, uh, five and six are, com are uh, you can build complex track because you have intermediate nodes. A could have that could be uh, below C. That could be C, and A could decide to go either via C or via C prime. You can build a structure here. You see, uh, just like in row. Because now you have multiple segments, so you can you can have a, a whole graph, whatever graph, a diodag really, and just like a classical diodag with the root in A, and you forward down the diodag, but you establish it up. So you could have many many segments, many nodes, as long as you have global your diodag, um, that can be a single track. Okay, thank you. But but it's a complex one, but this is a serial track absolutely. Thank you. And for this one. We can decide to make it serial or to to say for the same track ID, same ingress, you can have mo uh, you can send multiple DAOs with different SRVIOs as long as it's a the root. You could say I can do like a, a wheel if I like, uh, where a is the hub and uh, e is a spoke. You could have multiple spoke and reuse the same track ID and same ingress. In which case, it would not be a serial track; it would be a hub and spoke. Um, so the draft does not prevent hub and spoke, but really the thinking is to do the exact same thing as three, but using a tunnel. And I'm actually missing the encapsulation. So let me fix my track, my slide. We are talking about four. What I'm missing is this really. Oops, it's not very nice. I'm missing something like that. So, um, well, well it's, it's represented by, by the blue thing. Okay, so it's, it's the other thing. Um, so basically, at this, at, uh, on this slide, we'll be doing the exact same thing. We'll be encapsulating in blue. So the packet is gray. We encapsulate it in A and we decapsulate in E. The only difference is it's an SRVIO. So the SRVIO gives you the next hops. So what A sees as a VIO is B, C, D, E. With the VIO, if you look at the difference, the VIO said A, C, the SF VIO said A, C, A, B, C, D, E, because you have to signal who receives it and who sends the ACK. So A has to be included. Uh, in this state four, we actually do not uh, place A because A is implicitly the first. And we actually do not place the egress as target. It's also implicit. So we have this double implicit that the last entry point is a possible target and that the first entry is the ingress. Why do we do this? It's because now the SRVIO as presented here, expressed in RFC 8138 is exactly what goes in the packet um, because the source is not part of the routing either only the, the destination and then the next hops. So formatted like that, you get exactly the routing header as you wanted it. Whether you want to reach E or you want to reach F. We only signal as target, E is also implicitly a target. So, so S passes the packet to A, A adds an SRH which says uh, destination B, and SRH CDE or in the compressed form BCDE passes the packet to B. B consumes the destination, makes the destination C and the, and the routing header DE, which is what I wrote here. 
So that's the non-compressed form. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The rotting header gets consumed. To till it reaches E, which is the last hop in the rotting header, decapsulates then to F. So it's exactly the same thing as if uh, we are talking to a, to a external destination, um, but instead of being the root which does your encapsulation, now it's A. And we have to put the track ID explicitly into the packet using into the uh, RPI. Uh, actually, I made it elective. That's why you have this bit. Remember. Right. It's a short, so, so why not, why do we why do we need the track ID in the in the in the uh, packet? A, um, in, in if if you have a uh, if 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 it was the root, you 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 would need it because that that allows you to find. Which is effectively if you have, if you pass back to multiple geodags, which route you talk about because the route itself is compressed. In in the case of this, it's not useful because the route is not compressed. It's the source of the packet. You you always find it in the packet. So um, so com com uh, as opposed to eight one three eight, which compressed is the main route. Here it's really there is really no need for it. If you use source routing, no need that I know of. So that's why I made it elective. Okay, uh, but you're ele imagining that there are some cases where we need to know node C, D, or E need to know the track ID in order to be able to forward the, in order to be able to process the source loop, the the, the source route. Normally, no, but as you say, that might be the future. So it's it's we, we still recommend to put it. Here you do need it because you, your rib depends on it. You might you might have multiple ribs, and each of those ribs might have a state to go to F. Right. You need to so, the right rib. And so, so here we're, you need it. we're effectively picking an instance ID. Um, that is is we renamed it the track ID because you've reused the RPL instance ID. The track so ID I mean, is an RPL instance ID. It's an RPL instance. Local. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. it is okay. a local instance ID. Um, and the elective thing says basically, if you don't understand this thing, ignore. So basically, you could decide to if if you're using only non-storing mode like this this uh, profile four, you could decide not to implement this at all. And it might be some nodes in the network they do implement it. Well, because of the e bit set to elective, you're Okay, to ignore completely the uh, it's like the two and the six, you know, in in the bit we change with user three point four. Right, right. I, I, I get ignore. that. I get that part. I'm trying to understand the how we would use the data. Um, is what yeah, in this case, data. I have no use because you just follow the the routing header and and you have no choice. Now, if you had cross queues flow, that would be a flow ID for you, and maybe it has a higher cross or a lower cross, but Right now, there is nothing specified. Just follow the rotting header anyway, and it's a strict rotting header in this case. So if it was a loose rotting header, yeah, because you need to find which segment you're gonna use between loose hop and loose hop. And that segment will effectively be associated to the same track. But if you are strict, if you're strict, there is no um, no use. So for this exact profile four, if if the list is strict. And since you know you don't compress the ingress, there is absolutely no use which is specified. Like I said, future you could say I need it for course or something like that. Or TSN, you know, um, if you have time slots in six dish which are associated to one track, then you need it. Six dish architecture needs it, by the way, always. Because of the track to 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 find the time slot because we associate a time slot to this track. Maybe that's an answer. Sure. Um, profile five. We are back to storing mode segments, but now you realize that we are also back to the first drawing where you've got multiple loose hops. And because you have multiple loose hops, you can also at A 
uh, and just draw a serial thing, but you could have A, C prime, E as well. And you know, all those drawings we do at row where you see multiple paths and path selection based on whatever. Uh, with profile five, you can draw them. Because now you do this complex thing, which is loose hops, and, and it's a graph, it's no more a line, and you do segments between. So the segments are all PDAO, they're all related to the track. <clears throat> so if you look at them, they have all egress, ingress, I'm sorry. Uh, well, oops, this is a typo. No, no, this is not a typo. Well, yes, this is a typo. So they, they, they all say that the track ID is A1, A129. So, so you don't need to re-encapsulate a packet, which is A129. And uh, if you're A, that means you're the ingress. And you realize that we have one additional DAO versus before. The track is not implicit. In this case, the track is, in, uh, is rooted in A. So A will have two DAO. The first DAO is a non-storing mode, which gives you the, the loose ACE, and that will cause the first uh, uh, that will cause the encapsulation. So instead of profile one, where the encapsulation was done by the root, and A did not need to encapsulate, now you realize that A is the ingress of the track. So A does this first encapsulation with the routing header, which goes to C and to E. And you realize that once A has done that, we are back into the, the situation where we were in profile one. We have a packet with a routing header, which says A, C, E to F. And, and that will follow the, the segments. So A encapsulates because of this explicit track with this SRVIO. But then this explicit track has a loose sequence of hops. And it will go across the segments which are done by PDAO 1 and 2. If you look at the definition of, of the segments, it's exact same as in 1. So if you understood 1, you understand them. The only difference, and it's back to the question Michael asked about uh, if the implementation is the same as before, mostly yes. Um, if they support any track, you know, it's, it's basically very similar to what they have to do here. They have to understand the track and they follow. It's just that if you're Mr. R and Mr. C, that's kind of interesting because Mr. C operates a bit like A in, in, in the original flow uh, here because the packet is already encapsulated. It already has the right ingress, A, the source of the packet is A. When C receives it, is uh, the destination, so it will um, it will process the routing header which C has insert which A has inserted, and it will make the destination C. Um, but but basically the packet that C reply receives as the right source, you know, A and one twenty nine in the RPI, so C knows that doesn't need to do an encapsulation. It just has to follow because this station is now E, it just has to, to pass it to, to D, which is the next stop to target E. So the difference between A and C is that for A, it's not an implicit track compared to, to profile three. Profile three, you would not, uh, in A, you would not have gotten PDAO three. So A would have encapsulated, but actually since F is not a target, you would not even have resolved it. The only thing that resolves for A is because you received this PDAO3 for which a target is F. So if you look at the rib in A, the only way to, to reach F is actually via this track A129, which implies uh, encapsulating with an SRVIO CE, so and, and himself source, so he does. And once he processes packet, oh, I need to reach C, that's when I'm gonna use the state coming from PDAO2 which says your next stop is B. So, so there is kind of a recursion that happened in A. Uh, C just found that the packet was already encapsulated correctly, but a good source, good uh, RPI. So I have a route to E in that rib. Uh, 
Next up is D, let me fall. Does that make sense? I know it's hard, right? I mean, I've been thinking about, about that for, for a month. You just had 10 minutes. But um, you'll find this in the mailing list. You also find it in the draft. In the draft, I, I put many tables with the ribs, with what goes in the DAO, what goes in the target, everything. And I also explain what's in the packet at this stage, which is kind of summarized here. But if you take this and you take the draft, those slides are a bit of a complement to the draft. So all this together, you should be able to, to follow. And profile six is the same as profile five. So you see that five and six are the profiles which enable you to do complex tracks because they do source segment routing, basically. What I call segment routing is very much what uh, the ATF calls segment routing anyway. All those things are segments. And by placing a source route header, you can go across segments. So it's segment routing for Ripple. And the segments can be can be along a complex track. So six is just like five, but it's all source routed. So so what that will cause is a re-encapsulation. Because first, based on PDAO3, when when you know this packet from S to F reaches A, A looks at his rib. The only way, the only target F is here. So that means I need to encapsulate source myself, uh, track ID 141, and uh, I'll put an SRH saying C and E, meaning uh, in non compressed form, destination C and uh, SRH E, which is what you can see here. Now, now A ends up with a packet for, uh, instead of a packet for F, now I have an encapsulated packet, but for C, C is still not my neighbor. So how do I get to C? I have C as a target here, for which my next stop is B. But it's a different track idea, right? This one was 141, this one is 129. So in order to place the RPI, I have to re-encapsulate. So A will re-encapsulate the packet. And now we have a packet, an outer packet, which is from A to B, track ID 129. So it looks a bit stupid because there's just one hub, but you think about three hubs between A and B. And you'll realize that you need an SRH, et cetera. So you need an encapsulation. So the packet is decapsulated by B. And it's very similar to what you had here. It's just that the inner packet, the blue packet, is not the one which came from the left. The difference between this profile two and what we have here is that the packet from the left was encapsulated the first time by A to, to add the, the loose source via CE. And then we do the exact same thing as we did before. So, so you, are, you end up having A doing two levels of encapsulation, B removing one level of encapsulation, and so what you have is the, the uh, inner packet, A to C. C is my neighbor, I pass it to C, blah, blah, blah. Same discussion as for profile two, which is uh, destination, uh, which is uh, C. C uh, looks at the next top in the SRH, which is E. O for E, my only target is the implicit target here. So I need to encapsulate with an SRVIODE. And uh, so, so that creates such uh, an encapsulation that E decapsulates and blah. Whew. That was most of it. So uh, I thank you for bearing with me. Uh, ready for any questions? Now, now there are still a number of points, um, but but I told you that the main changes. It's it's basically the route is the ingress uh, to signal the track you're in. You, you you have to change the the source and to encapsulate in non-storing mode, which makes it so that you end up with this track in track that I just described here. So you have more encapsulation than in the previous iterations of the draft. And that's because now the, the, the route is is the ingress and you, you want to signal the route. Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, questions?
Well, there are all these questions and suggestions. Do you want to yeah. go through them or are you just uh, uh, tired? <laughs> Yes, we we can mention them, but as well they are in the mailing list, right? Um, I think they were on the mailing list, but I've not seen yeah. much traffic on them. So maybe we can use a few minutes to review those questions and if you can explain the reactions and answers, if that's okay with everybody. So yeah. the first thing is the lifetime unit. Remember, we discussed it earlier. Uh, people instead of having a long uh, unit or an expansion unit for for time we provide in the uh, dodag configuration option we provide the lifetime unit which is two bytes and that tells you what one is when we express time whether it's one second one minute one something and so it's just like a multiplier if you like and so Every time you find something like a tr uh, lifetime, uh, for instance, in a, a transit information option or something like that, um, this is expressed in lifetime units. And the first thing that uh, Women was asking is uh, whether the lifetime unit that you we need for tracks is in the same order as the one for the main DODAG. If not, then how would we signal the lifetime unit for the track? So that's one question, right? To do, if, is everything a uh, sense of time, but the duration, how often you refresh it, track? Is it the same for those tracks and for the main geodag? If not, then we have a prime of, of unit. So he has some questions about that, but uh, that's one thing we could discuss on the mailing list. Uh, second is track ID and ripple instance ID. So yes, a lot of the of the work that you have seen is to make a track be exactly the same thing as the main diodag. It's just another non-storing diodag, uh, just that it's a local ripple instance. So it means you need the API, but you also need either the source or the destination. And now it's the source. And, and so when you do a, um, an insertion, you have to change the source. That's what Sixman told us. Because we change the source, we change the track, meaning that's a different track. It's in a re-encapsulation blah. And so that's what I discussed already. Um, and so the question was, how does uh, a node understand whether um, a message is a normal PDAO or uh, well, uh, 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 a normal uh, uh, ripple message. So he, he wanted basically to make, not just in the PDAO, but also in the data packet. He wanted to, to make it clear whether we we're talking about uh, a packet which is forwarded along uh, uh, a track versus a, a normal ripple instance operated normally by ripple. And in this, in this code, actually, uh, that, that was a different code path. So it was useful for, for implementation to make a difference. So I've not shown it, did I? But um, the, 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 if you look at it, we, in the non-compressed form of the RPI in 6553, we actually update it to, to uh, use a bit saying, this is forwarded along a, a track, along a project with DAO. So that's why we extend 6553. And we actually create a new six layer edge where this flag, which says I'm going along a track, is implicit, but it's there. So if you're, it's implicitly set, meaning that if you, if you use six layer edge type seven, um, you must be forwarding along a peer route. The bit which says forwarding along a peer route is set. So, so actually, uh, uh, I took action based on that. We, we actually notify, we actually know, and I think uh, we should look at the draft, the latest in, instance of the draft, but I think in the PDAO there's a, a flag as well, which says this is a PDAO, not a normal DAO. Then there was the question about directionality. And for now we've dropped that, but it's it's open to the group, right? It was asked at the mailing list, because we are doing a, a DODAC. So you could say, hey, uh, could I forward the packets back to the root, like we do in normal, um, in the main DODAC. Well, the thing is, in this thing, there is no DIO. 
If there was a DIO, it would be IODV Ripple or something. Um, there is no DIO. So, so the path to the root of the local instance is not known. So if you're using non-storing, how do you know how to get there? If you're using the storing mode segments, you could assume that you, you have a way back. But with non-storing, you, you don't even know. So for now, we, we, we said if you want to go the other way, you also build a track the other way. But there is no return path. Um, and, and we are looking for simplicity. If we, are, if we are trying to do bidirectional, I'm afraid we are adding a lot of complexity. But if someone has a, a good idea of how to do that and the group wants to do it, then obviously I'm open to add that, adding that to the, to the document. Um, and then he, he wanted a flow of message exchange, PDR, PDR, PDAO, PDAO, PDAO. And to be honest, uh, I don't even remember if I did it or not. I think I did it, but did I commit it or where is it? Um, so you, you wanted a, a flow sequence, which is always good. So yes, I mean, my intention is to provide one. Uh, I just can't remember if I did it or not. So any feedback on all those questions, lifetime? Uh, so this one is already answered. We, we It's actually signaled. But uh, the directionality, uh, this one I think I will do unless you tell me don't. No, we, we won't tell you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, for the bi-directionality, uh, you realize there is no DIO, so we don't know the way back. Uh, we could follow the reverse PDAO in storing mode, but it does not always take you all the way. You never know. I mean, it's not meant for it. For non storing it, it's just there is absolutely no state. We don't know. Mm. So, if you have clues, but for now, uh, the answer is uh, for, for now, the answer is no. Everybody has the same lifetime unless you tell me uh, something different. But the draft right now, and I have no plan to change it unless I'm being pushed. So, so if nobody raises a hand, nothing will happen. This was done. For this one, same thing, nothing will happen if uh, nobody raises a hand. And this I will do. Or I did it, I don't remember. Yep, sounds good. Uh, other TBD, there was discussion of loop avoidance. I think we're mostly through, but uh, that was uh, Raoul. And Raoul, the day you find the time and the courage, just look at the latest iteration of the draft and the helmet could not have passed a loop avoidance. But basically the modes which are strict, don't make loops. Uh, the cases of loops will be this. And in particular, when you do, you can re-enter this several times because even this track two can be actually loose, leading to re-encapsulation, re-encapsulation. And I don't know if at some point you may create loops. I believe you can. Uh, that would be crazy, but I believe you can. Uh, should we have all the safeguards against that? I don't even know what safeguards we could have. But there is this question that uh, whether the draft allows for loops, and I guess it's possible when you do loose stuff to have uh, loops. Who sends the PDR? That was another question. For now, it's always the guy who will be the ingress of the track. But it could be an application. It could be a third party. You know, maybe I'm a neighbor of A, and I want to reach D, and I just tell the root, give me a pass from A to Z, <laughs> you know, and I will pass my packets to A. Uh, so open to suggestion on this. For now, I have no action. The, the, the ingress is always uh, the one that sends the PDR. But there is no reason for that. How do we maintain the sibling state? I think it's related to this draft that, uh, that would be separate, which selects the siblings. So how do we maintain the siblings? In Ripple, in general manner, say there must be a layer two something or, or neighbor discovery to, to maintain your, your relationship with your parent to ensure it's bi-directional blah. Uh, so there's always this question about what 8545 gives you and if that's the recommended way of doing it. Um, this I did, so what was called 8 RPOs, that's the name that went away. So it's the VIOs, whether it's SR VIO or SF VIO, they are all VIOs now. 
Um, and at the moment, what, what is, is in, I have made that more specific. I, I changed the text to make sure. Basically, what we do is in non storing mode, we start at the node after ingress, all the way to ingress included. And that's because we want this to be the exact SRH that will be placed in the package in 8138. And in uh, storing mode, we go all the way from ingress to ingress, both included, because the egress is the one receiving the DIO. And we check that it's okay. And the ingress is the one which will send the hack. So we did them both. Uh, and that's, that's the start of that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay, so yeah, I think we're pretty close to have everything. Uh, it, there is a, a good uh, a path of cleaning to be done. And if you, I need to look again at the tickets, I understand this. Yes, um, no problem. They are quite obsolete. But that's part of the cleaning, right? Uh, the the yes. first pass was to get everything in the document. So if we agree that the sibling selection goes away, if we change the name of the sibling uh, information option to whatever, maybe neighbor information option, I don't know. Do you like neighbor? It's just yeah. something that does not collide with SIO, which is already there. Mm. Do you want to take that into the mailing list so we can have problems? Yeah, yeah, I can take that to the mailing mm -hmm. list, no problem. Yeah, so neighbor and sibling is the same, right? Right. I mean, mm. sibling were, were the, the neighbors which were not parents, not children, yeah. just brothers. <laughs> and not at all of them, but just the selected ones. So we can define as well at this terminology, what is sibling, what is neighbor, so we... Yes, we can. Well. The, the, the problem is not really the terminology, is the fact that sibling starts with an S. So right now, we in the draft, we call it an SIO. Right from some reason, the, this, the discussion in Ripple on the disk, and you find that the solicited information option that you may yeah. put on the disk is SIO as well. So, so I have this conflict of acronym because I can't call both an SIO. There is, there is a problem. Ari is, is asking, uh, thank you, Basan. Ari is asking if there is an implementation available. An implementation of this? No, yes. I know somebody working, uh, women has been uh, toying with an implementation. Uh, but it would be in, uh, in Cisco's private uh, code. Uh, it's not uh, shipping quality, it's just like experiment. Okay. So, uh, I hope that my co-authors uh, would work on that, but I have no news from, from um, some of them for a very long time, so I just don't know what they're doing. Okay, thank you very much. So we will uh, collect the action points and uh, Hopefully the recording is available soon as well. And then we will send the code DM with the action points to the mailing list. Oh, that's it's fantastic. Fine? And okay. then Dominique, because you are interested, and Michael, because I mean, the only one I can trust on this. I mean, if, if you can look at those six things and the examples I placed in the draft, etc. Right. You're, you're Michael is gone, so now is the time to assign him some work. Oh, good. Anyway, we are at the top of the hour. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, your attention. Trust, I mean, trust, yeah. so enjoy your aspirin. <laughs> okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you all. We are courageous enough to stay <laughs> over yes. the end. And, and let me know uh, things like, for instance, if you want me to, to make things implicit. I told you for now, this, this looks like a duplication. See, this is always there and there, kind of. Looks like a duplication could make it implicit, easy. And whether uh, we, we we say should must, for instance, in C, should should it say with this non storing mode with the storing mode should it also place D in its routing table as a destination? Right now it does not it just place E in its destination, its routing table. So if he has a packet for D, well he's a neighbor. But if there was D E F G blah, all this list is not in his rib. Even if, if actually he, he saw them because of the DAO, it's not install them in the rib. It just installed the target. If you want me to install the whole list, everything which is after you in this list, um, I can do text, but that could be a discussion. Well, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we've come to a close. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. See you in the idea.
Yes, I hope to see you in, in one day for real. <laughs> well, Have a good afternoon. I think uh, the remaining ones are all in Europe. Uh, so good afternoon to all and have a good weekend. Have a good Talk weekend. Soon. Thank Take you care. soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.